Great to be here worshipping our God together today. You might notice already we're doing something a little different as we begin our service today, and that's because we're starting a series on prayer. And we don't want to just learn about prayer, we want to be involved in prayer so we can get used to praying in different ways. So some of those prayers, you might be, I'm on this, and some of those prayers might make you feel Maybe a little bit uncomfortable if you're uncomfortable in silence. It may just uh, make you stop for a minute. But we want to use our different senses and uh, our different passions and skills to be able to pray uh, to God today um, in different ways. So to start our service, I'm going to be praying, we're going to be praying a breath prayer. So I think that's something that's easy for all of us. Most of us, we know how to breathe, and we're going to give that a go today. But I ask that you get comfortable, and this is for people online as well. Maybe put your arms out as you breathe and as you come before God today. This is a breath prayer by Christine Sign. Let's pray. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out your cares and concerns. Breathe in the love of God. Breathe out your doubts and despairs. Breathe in the life of God. Breathe out your fears and frustrations. We sit quietly before the one who gives life and love to all creation. We sit in awe of the one who formed us in our mother's wombs. We sit at peace, surrounded by the one who fills every fibre of our being. Breathe in the breath of God. Breathe out your tensions and turmoil. Breathe in the love of God. Breathe out your haste and hurry. Breathe in the life of God. Breathe out your work and worry. We sit quietly before the one who gives life and love to all creation. We sit in awe of the one who formed us in our mother's wombs. We sit at peace surrounded by the one who fills every fibre of our being. Amen. We're going to hand over to our worship team as we worship God now in song. Would you stand with us, please?
You do just what you say Though the storms may come And the winds may blow I'll remain steadfast And let my heart learn When you speak a word It will come to pass Great is your faithfulness to me Great is your faithfulness to me From the rising sun to the setting same I will praise your name Great is your faithfulness to me Love from age to age that the earth may pass away Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, he'll never let me down. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation, he'll never song a couple of weeks ago we're going to have another crack at it so do your best keep up it's fun I was an orphan 
I'm lost at the fall Running away when I hear you call But Father, you worked your will I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne But Father, you love me still And in love before you laid the world's foundation you predestined to adopt me as your own. You have raised me up so high above my station. I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone. your home to seek out the lost you knew the great and terrible cost but Jesus your face was set I worked my fingers down to the bone nothing I did could ever atone but Jesus you paid my debt by your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown. And you rose that I might be a new creation. I am born again by grace and grace alone. I was in darkness all of my life. I knew the dead, the day from the night. The Spirit, you made me see. I swore I knew the way on my own Head full of rocks, a heart made of stone The Spirit you moved in me oh! And your touch, sleeping spirit was awakened On my darkened heart the light of Christ has shone Called into a kingdom that cannot be shaken Heaven sin is by grace and grace alone. So I stand in faith by grace and grace alone. I will run the race by grace and grace alone. I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone. I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. understand you and relate to you and we praise you and we thank you. We worship you in this moment. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Welcome to worship. If you'd like to take your seat, it is so good to see you and to be seen by you. Uh, of course, a really warm welcome to Reverend Naomi, who's here. First time we put her straight up with the front. How was that? So uh, thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to what God's going to do in you and through you. So excited by that. Why don't you turn to the person next to you and just, just say, uh, isn't it warm, but God's love's cool? Go on, come on, just turn to the person next to you. And, and online too, turn to someone next to you. There we go. So good to, uh, it's so good to worship with you. Hang on, not just yet, guys. Give me a second. I haven't gone to the one-minute mingle yet in a, in a moment. All right. It's a little bit of chaos happening this morning, but it's all good. God's in the house, so it's great. We're excited about what God's going to do to us and, in, and through us in this moment. I've got a few notices, and I'll stick to the script. Otherwise, we'll go really long. Next week, Sunday the 17th of March, we have a newcomer's morning tea. So if you are new here, if you haven't been here before, or haven't been to a newcomer's morning tea, you're most welcome to stay for that. No booking required. It'll be in one of the uh, kids' ministry rooms out around the side. So that's next Sunday following this service. We do have Alpha running, and that is running at Corolla Park. And that starts this coming week as well. And so we are praying in faith for 30 
people under 30 years of age uh, to attend that. So I encourage you to pray into that. If you are over 30, then your role is to pray. We have Easter camp. Gee, you're not sparking this morning, are you? That's all right. Uh, we have Easter. Yes, yeah, stop. You reckon, Danny? Get down now. Um, <laughs> Easter camp's coming up in a few weeks' time. Easter, can you believe it's so soon, isn't it? Yeah, next year it's later in April, so that's much better, isn't it? But um, I encourage you to pray for Easter camp. I encourage you to re- get people that you know to register for that. And if you want to support that, you can do so financially as well. Uh, next Saturday night, we have an exalt worship night. Now, this is particularly for young adults, particularly set for young adults, but not exclusive for young adults. So I'll, I'll be attending that. That's here, and I believe it is at 6.30. Is there a slide for that? Six o'clock. I'm glad somebody else knows much better than me. So thank you, Mackenzie. So it's six o'clock here for young adults, but you don't have to be young adults. Is that right? We're going to say that anyway to everybody. So there we go. That's what's going to happen. Thank you for those who have given and supported the life of this church. We are making a difference in people's lives. Giving makes a difference in our life as well. And what it says is it says that I am not owned by my possession, but I have control over them. And we respond to God's goodness by returning a portion to God. So let me just pray and bless that, and uh, then we'll go to the one-minute mingle. Lord, we praise you, and we thank you for that which you have put at our disposal. And in faith, we bring back a portion of that to you, whether it's the little black boxes at the back or whether we've done that online. And we bring these things to acknowledge who you are and the part you play in our lives that you're all and above all. And so we worship you with our voices, with the attitude of our heart, but with our resources too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have a little habit here, which is called the One Minute Mingle, which we invite you to stand up and turn to those who are around you and say, G'day, glad to see you. Welcome to worship. Um, Please, would you do that now? Stand up and let's mingle. G'day online church. Uh, am I there or am I there? I'm here, I'm there. There we go, I've got the red there, that's it. So uh, online church, I'm not sure whether we, you're getting words on the screen today or not. Uh, if not, I apologise for that. We've had a few technical difficulties along the way. We had our large um, big service last week and as part of that we stripped the whole pile of gear out and we took it to another venue and then we brought it back here and sometimes things don't always go back together as easy as they should. Next week we are actually streaming that service to you so it was recorded, we've been mixing it and we're streaming it and we'd love you to join in with that. But if you have any prayer needs today, we'd love you to um, put those prayer needs in the chat. Wendy's hosting and uh, we'd love to um, pray for you and connect with you and bless you in any particular way we can. So we trust this service is an encouragement to you and we look forward to sharing with you. God bless you, my friends.
And if I didn't have myself on mute, mute, that would work so much better, wouldn't it? Listen, let me, uh, let me speak to you. Because today in the next few weeks following, we are focusing our attention on prayer and specifically what we can learn from prayer in the Bible. So what we're doing now is a three-part series that we will repeat at least once more this year. And those who are in person or uh, alive online will know we've already begun to change things up and so we started with a prayer. Following this sermon we'll have some more times of prayer and this is a, it's a pattern we plan to follow for the whole of this series and what we want to do is make more time for prayer in these next few weeks. So last year, quite independently of each other, both the Elders' Council and our <clears throat> excuse me, senior staff leadership team discerned that we needed to focus our attention more on prayer and specifically that we need to teach into prayer and how to pray. And they believe that this is an area of our church's life that we need to focus on and push into uh, that needs to be lifted up and highlighted and taught into. When, when both these groups that I'm part of, the Elders' Council and the Senior Staff Leadership Team, came back with this result, I've got to say it filled me with some apprehension. I mean, I, I love to pray. I, I believe in prayer. I, I practice prayer. I'm, I'm not someone, though, with the gift of intercession. I am what I, what I often call a person who's disciplined in prayer. I, I make time to pray, but it, but it doesn't come completely natural to me. But, but in the end, you know, we, we don't need to be all things, do we? We don't have, need to have all the gifts because we, we have the scriptures and that's enough and they teach us how to pray. They teach us about our life of faith and, and they teach us all that we need to know. So, so this series and the series to come are based on prayers and what we can learn from prayer in the Bible and how that applies to our lives. I remember some years ago being at a wider church meeting and I was listening intently to a, to a very eloquent preacher who was preaching really well and he was giving a, a, this incredibly greatly constructed sermon to, to the whole of our church, broad church. And I, I was with him all the way and, until he said something like, we know that prayer does nothing. And I couldn't believe what I just heard, that a church leader would devalue one of the most precious gifts we have in our relationship with God, one of the most formidable weapons and the direct link that we have to the throne room of God. And I'm sitting there in that meeting and I nearly blew up. And I stand before you today to say my view is exactly the opposite of that. For I believe that prayer achieves much. Prayer is our lifeline. Prayer is our breath of faith. I believe, as it says in the end of the book of James, that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And prayers said in Jesus' name carry his authority, his, his stamp. In fact, this church is built on prayer and I believe that that God is moving now more than ever before because of the prayers of his people, because of indirect response to the prayer that is happening all around us as it bubbles up and as, it gro as we grow a heart of prayer as a church. God loves it when we pray. I, I, I need to say to you right off the bat that the prayer is really simple. It's not complicated, it's not for the spiritual elite, it's, it's not for the saints, it's for all of us. It's available to all of us, it's necessary for all of us. So today I want to I take you just for a few moments into what has been called by some people God's phone number. It's 2 Chronicles 7.14 and if, you, if you've got your Bibles you'd like to open up, I'm, I'm preaching from one verse and the Bible reading today is one verse. It's on the screen behind me. 2 Chronicles 7.14 and I commend it to you for your meditation and for your memorization. And it says this, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray 
and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and I will heal their land. It's a Bible passage well worth memorising. Now, passages from the Scriptures are always best interpreted in their broader setting. So let me spend a moment painting the picture, the, the context. And the context of this verse is found after Solomon, the great king with, with, all, the one, you know, with all the wives and the, and the concubines, uh, David's son has built and dedicated the temple to the Lord. The, the splendid, beautiful temple, like extraordinary. And we see that in the, the chapter just prior in 2 Chronicles 6 and then the first bits of chapter 7. And Solomon dedicates the temple to the Lord. And then we find, we come into this part where God appears to Solomon and tells him that he's heard his prayer, his prayer of dedication, the prayer of his heart, the prayer made on behalf of the whole nation. And with these words as part of what God says in response... And the overall thrust is this, that God has chosen this place, this temple, to be a house that is sacred for his peoples. And if there comes a time, because of their sin, because of their rebellion, because of their turning against God, if there comes a time when God withholds rain or send plagues on the land or, or some other disaster on the land, the people are to pray. And if the people pray, then God will respond and bring the blessing back to the land. And that's the verse that we run straight into, verse 14. In saying this, God affirms that he's heard and answered Solomon's prayer of dedication. And Solomon's talked about what happens when people sin and then turn to prayer and asking God to forgive them. And this is God's answer. We've got it here. Now, there's, there's heaps more to explain about the context and, and what's happened here, but that just gives you a, a, a brief pricey of, of, of what it looks like. So after all the ceremonies of the dedication of the temple, all the celebration, all, all the bits and pieces, the pomp, the ceremony, all that's taken place, the sacrifices and the feasting that's all happened, God appears and speaks to Solomon. And in God's answer to Solomon, we find help for ourselves and an understanding of how we too can pray, how we're to engage with God, how, how we are to, to come before the great king. So I'm just going to focus on this one verse. And if you look with me, you will find some guidance for how we pray. Because the verse is split in two. It comes with conditions. And then the answer or, or the blessing, the conditions and the blessing. And the first part tells us by which, how and which we can approach God in prayer. So let me, let me run through it. And we find these first three words, if my people. If we can have that verse back up on the screen, please, Jamie, that would be, just, just keep the verse up there, that would be great. If my people, followed by then, of course, who are called by my name. I, I love these first three words, if my people, because they tell us of, of the basis of how we start prayer. It tells us that prayer starts with relationships. Notice it says, if my people called by my name. Notice how it's, it's possessive in, in a good sense. It's personal. It, it has an intimacy to it. It's not... If those people or some randos somewhere decide to pray for me or that lot that are sitting over there, it's, it's my people who are called by my name. I'd even go so far as to say it, it, it refers to family. And I, and I get that really sense, that really strong sense here and in the wider context and, and with what's happening with Solomon and, and it fits with who are called by my name. I mean, it reminds me of, of all the family names we carry. I mean, you're, you're given a family name by your parents and you pass them on to your children. It's, it's this familiar setting. It means connection, belonging. It means part of something larger. It means 
It means we have security in this, in this family relationship that we have with God. And then, of course, as we know more from Jesus, we, we, we're invited beautifully and wonderfully, sovereignly into the family of God, welcomed in there. And, and that's the deal when we pray. We pray out of that context, out of a relationship, out of a status as a child of God. We pray not as some random person, unknown or unloved or even unsupported, but we pray with connection and friendship and, and compassion. And it's received, here's the deal, it's received with love. It's like a parent who, who listens to a child that wants to talk. It's beautiful. When you pray, think of God listening like someone who wants to hear you because they love you. Now, here's the thing. Uh, our prayers are then to recognise who we are and who God is. And so the next phrase is, we'll humble themselves. This is the posture of how we are then to approach God. And the posture of how we do that matters to God and matters to our prayer. You know, the last couple of years, I've been really become to appreciate the place humility takes in our life as a follower of Jesus. Humility is the foundation of how we understand who we are and who God is. That we're not God and the sooner the better we figure that one out, the better off life is for us really. You see, if we go into prayer demanding and, and aggressively seeking our way, that's, that's not a relationship, is it? That's a shopping list. It's putting ourselves somewhere on equal terms with God. And sometimes forget, we forget, this is not a... The, the relationship that we have with God is, is not a relationship of equals. It's, it's a graced relationship. It's unmerited favour, something given to us even though we don't deserve it. Humility says, God, you know all and, and I surrender all to you. It says, God, I'm not worthy to be in your presence. It says, God, I have, I have so many faults and failings. And it's a true recognition of who you are, God. And so when you add humility and that family relationship, it puts us in the spot where, where we're ready to engage with God. And then the Bible says to pray and to seek my face. Or seek God's face. In other words, we see God, we, we, we listen to what God wants to communicate. We, we actively pursue his presence. We block out other things that, that come in the way and, and, and want to sort of get stopping us seeing who God is. So it says, let's, let's look less to our needs and more to what God wants to communicate. When, when we see God's face, we're looking for his will, his ways, his direction. We want to know his mind. We want to understand his thoughts. We, we, we want to walk his ways. That's why humility is the key here. It says we're not interested in what we know. We're looking to find God's perspective, God's character, God's input into our lives and the lives all around us. And then it says, it says once you're assured of the relationship... So we've got security in, the, in that we can approach God. Once we're humble, one, once, we, once we seek God's face and, and we get a glimpse or a, a, a discernment of his direction, then we turn. Then we see how far we've drifted from our own ways and, and we need to turn and go towards God's ways. You see, the context is when the people sin, when they when they walk their own way, when they disregard what God has asked them to do, when they break the covenant that God has with them and they go off on their own and, and they disregard what God says. And so when, when they realise, when they, when they understand, when they awaken to themselves, when they see who God is, to turn. Turn away from our own thoughts, our own ideas, our own good intentions, our own our own self-interests, and we turn towards God. We confess our wrongdoings. 
We confess who we are, our sin, and we walk in God's ways. So turning is another word for repentance. And with repentance comes forgiveness and right standing before God. And we need to do that when we come to God in prayer. So let me sum this first part up. Remember the relationship that we have. We come in humility. We understand again who God is. And we turn from our ways and we, we walk and we embrace God's ways. And, and this is where we run then into the straight into the second part, the promise, the blessings of the relationships, the fulfilment of God's love for us. Notice in the second part it says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive. I, I, I love, I, I love that. I, I love the nature of God, the generosity of God, the love of God, the goodness of God. Do you, do you see the character of God come out here? The forgiver and the healer, the one who desires that connection, that, that relationship with us. He listens to his people and he responds. It's so amazing, so good. It's such a blessing. And here's the deal. You too get that when you pray to God. You get the blessing. You get the fulfillment of that promise made all those years ago applicable to you even now. In the New Testament, it talks about us being able to approach the throne of God. When we pray, we come right into the presence of God, right to the very spot before God. Though it doesn't say in the, in the passage for today, we, we have access to God through Jesus. And there'll be more about that in the weeks to come. When we play our part, we engage with God in a whole new level. So if you feel that your prayers are stonewalled, if you feel your prayers bounce off the ceiling sometimes, if you feel like you, you just have no connection with God, then, then I encourage you, examine yourself in light of 2 Chronicles 7.14 and see what God says. Now what, we've, what we just briefly looked at is not a formula. It's, it's not a ritual it's a relationship. It's an attitude of heart. It's an attitude that approaches God with respect and vulnerability. And when we do that, God beautifully and graciously responds to us. The promise, a most precious promise, is that we, even us, get to have an audience with the King. Amen. So as we think about what Jonathan has said today, we're going to take time to pray, to respond to God with what we've heard. There might be something that Jonathan has said that's really um, captured your thoughts and um, has you thinking about your relationship with God. So it's going to be a time of silent prayer. Um, just for those of you who are online, um, I hope that there's a space for you. Um, if you've got kids around you, that's okay. Um, but maybe take this time because I think this time of silence is a gift to us. Maybe if you have children at home, it's been a little bit of a crazy morning for you. I know here we've had a bit of a crazy morning as well and maybe that prayer time has gone away. To be honest with you, I was thinking about when Jonathan said, you know, that our position, our humbleness um, matters and I thought, oh, you know, when, you're, when you've got kids, sometimes it's I'm praying while I'm in the shower or I've got this five minutes to, to spend with God. So this is a gift for us today to be able to sit quietly before God and be honest and open with him. So I'm going to start us in prayer. I'm going to start with a prayer of confession 
and then we'll have a time of silence and then um, I'll close. So let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you want a relationship with us, that you continually call us by name, that you know us intimately and you want us to know you. Lord, as we think of who you are and all that you have done for us, we are just in awe of you. And we take this time now to say sorry. Sorry for those times that we have turned to our own thoughts, our own ideas, our own way of doing things, instead of seeking you first. We are sorry. And we thank you, Lord, that you hear us from heaven, that you turn to us and you say to us, your sins are forgiven. And we are humbled and amazed and we give you the praise and the glory. So, Lord, now we bring our own prayers in this silence before you. Lord, we thank you for this gift of time, of this gift of being with you and your people, that we celebrate all that you are doing in and through us as your church. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to ask you to stand with us as we worship, but in the continuing um, attitude of prayer, that you just use the space around you to make your peace with God. the love. 
every knee will bow, every tongue will shout, oh glory to Jesus alone, Jesus, Jesus to you we lift our nothing worth more that will ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweet Shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the
So stay standing because now is your turn to pray with someone, with a group of people. It means we're going to have to get brave. It means we're going to have to talk to some other people, get to know them. doesn't need to be about sharing your lives. It's just one thing and it might be something that you heard from Jonathan today. It might be something that's happening and say, I just like prayer for this right now. It might just be sitting together in the silence and praying your own prayers together. If you're online, we do have a prayer button on the platform. So if you would like to pray with someone as a host, you can press that prayer button. But if you're with people in the room, maybe you'd like to get together now and pray together. So this prayer is for you to get together and take your time. And then when we're finished, the band will lead us in one last song. Wonderful time to be able to pray together, but if you could uh, wind it up, God will be waiting for you once you're finished. You come back, He'll still be there. Just stand with us now as we finish. Ten. 
Father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. this week to set aside some time to pray to be in prayer to to create some space to speak and to listen on the front counter there's a there's a weekly prayer list if you like some help in terms of knowing what to pray about that's just a little piece of paper there available for you there'll be a prayer team down the front here if you want prayer i encourage you to come and get some prayer but my friends go in peace to love and to serve our great and wonderful God who wants to hear your voice. Amen. Amen. Well, online church, my privilege to close to you. I think we lost transmission at some point, but uh, I trust that this has been a blessing and a help to you. Whether you're watching this later or in a week's time, it doesn't matter. My friends, God bless you. Make space to hear God's voice. Listen to him. Do what he says in Jesus' name. Amen.